Kia ora boys and girls, welcome to another episode of The Drop Clutch with me, Ricky V. In this series, I'm interviewing as many metal drummers from around New Zealand as I can get to, uh, just to find out what makes these guys and girls tick. Now, tonight's guest is a fantastic drummer. Um, he is the drummer, current drummer for Just One Fix. He was also in Silent Torture and Enoch. I have Ross Curtin. Ross, how we doing, bro? Yeah, not bad, man. Not bad. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, bro. I really appreciate your time. Uh, now, to get us started, can you tell us uh, about yourself, about uh, the bands that you've been in? Give us a little bit of a backstory about yourself, please. Um, yeah, I've been playing drums for like a good on 20 or so years now. Um, and yeah, I've been through a few different bands as well. Also Silent Torture, Enoch. Um, I was also in Algorithms with Luke that does Primal Mastering and Bailey for a little while. Uh, that was actually the first band I started playing gigs with. Sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, I started drumming at around 11 or 12 years old, I think it was. Yeah, um, first picked up doing like the marching drumming. Um, wow, just, okay. Uh, what my parents found out, well, like found for me to start learning drums. And so I started with, I'm um, in a pipe band and then moved to like the American style marching drumming and a drum line for quite some time as well. <laughs> sure. Sure. Uh, that's definitely something that uh, I have spoken about before with, with friends of mine about that being something that New Zealand is uh, really missing out on. You know, uh, there's there's elements of it, sure, as you are evidence of. But if you look at some of the drummers that come out of the States and their drum line history and, and how phenomenal they are with their stick control and it all being tied back to that. And it's here, but it's so small here. And I feel like if you know, it could be grown uh, that it would have a, a really positive positive effect on our drummers here. So, yeah, definitely something I've thought about before. Uh, now, you are the current drummer for Just One Fix. Now, they've been around for a long time, bro. Can you tell us how you joined Just One oh, Fix? Um, it happened because the previous drummer, Warren Kelly, um decided to move down to Tauranga um, and was just finding it too hard to, like, it was just too much for him to be traveling up to Auckland all the time to commit to staying in the band. So he decided he was going to leave. And as far as I remember, he recommended that they asked me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that was pretty cool because I had previously taken over on drums in a band that he had previously been in, Damn the Trend. Um, they were like sort of metal quarry thrash band, um, which didn't last too long after I joined. But yeah, that was how I had met him to begin with. And so then, yeah, I think he recommended me for just one bit, <laughs> which is yeah. real cool. <laughs> yeah, GCS. <laughs> uh, cool. So you said that you started drumming at 11, right? Yeah, somewhere around there, living yeah. as well. <laughs> um, what got you started? Why did you want to start dr or Why did you start drumming, or, or why did you want to start drumming? Um, well, my first inspiration was um, my grandfather had a drum kit that he'd just set up every now and then when I went down to Tauranga to see them for like Christmas and stuff, just every now and then. And so I just got really inspired to play drums and started hassling my parents about wanting to learn. So then they found the pipe band as a means for me to get started because it was before I couldn't get any drum lessons at school at the time, I think. So that was the best option they found at the time. <laughs> sure. That's fucking cool, man. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah. Can you tell us uh, some of your favorite drummers, please, Ross? Oh, pff. Biggest inspiration over the years has definitely been Chris Adler from Lamb of God. I mean, lots of people that I know over the years have even just called me Chris Adler because it was pretty evident where that inspiration came from. Oh. Um, but then I'm also in, like the Black Dahlia Murder, Alan Cassidy, 
I'm a massive oh. fan of him. Um, there's oh, the, oh my god, I can't even think of the name of the drama from Kill Switch Engage right now. Um, and then oh. there's um, not Sasha J, um, but uh, Brian Dalo from Mastodon as well. He's a big one. <laughs> sure, sure, cool. Um, who is your favorite drummer that you've seen live? I think the drum, the current drummer that's in Die Out is Murder. When they came here, Silent Torture opened for them. He was pretty insane. <laughs> um, otherwise, there's the drummer from Ulcerate, Jamie. He's sure. pretty up there as well. <laughs> it's probably one of the most intense Kiwi drummers I've seen for a long time. <laughs> insane style, that guy. Insane style. <laughs> Uh, well, speaking of which, um, this one's a little bit more difficult for most of the guys to answer. Um, so hopefully you can give it a good crack. How would you describe your style, please, Ross? I'm definitely pretty heavily influenced by like the old school 80s kind of thrash metal along the lines of like Dave Lombardo and Lars, just because that's sort of what I first started like learning and practicing along to when I was first getting into metal. But then, yeah, and then obvious, um, I suppose what groove metal, like Lamb of God, Pantera, and then a bit of metal core in there. So <laughs> listened to a lot of that over the years. Sure. Sure. So uh, how long have you, be have you been with Just One Fix now? Uh, it's just over three years, I think. Was Choice. Three years. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. And you guys have got a EP or an album coming out soon? Um, yeah, yeah, we've got a EP coming out, uh, five tracks on there. Um, on May the 6th, uh, oh my gosh, Submit or Death, I think it's called, Submit or Death. <laughs> Submit or Death, okay. <laughs> Sweet as. <laughs> um, tell us what the writing process for that has been like. Um it's taken quite a while over the last three years because two of the tracks that are on the EP are mostly made up of ideas that Warren had already been working with Sean on. Okay. And so I sort of kept those ideas for those two tracks, which is Warzone and Hades Rising that will be on those tracks. Um, were pretty, like... Hades Rising, I basically haven't changed at all in Warzone. I've just like my, made minor changes to the, like the basic idea of those of uh, his. Um, but then, yeah, the rest of the tracks have sort of been like my ideas that I've come up with since I've joined. But it's yeah, it's been a slowish process in terms of like writing and recording them, like it's taken us the whole sort of three years to get it all finished up. <laughs> sure. Why is that? Oh, just life getting in the way, I think, is a lot of it. Like, yeah, it's just one fixes in a young band. So. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. So uh, is it all one guy writing all the stuff and then putting it out to everybody to kind of build off of? Or is it a collaborative effort? Tell us about that, bro. It's mostly like Sean comes up with his guitar ideas that he likes and he'll work on them to get them to a certain point where he's happy enough to bring them to practice and then we'll go sort of from there, adding the drums and the rest in. <laughs> okay, sure. So he's already got, you know, generally speaking, he's already got the uh, structure worked out and then you guys just build off that? Like every now and then he might just bring a like a single riff in just to be like, Hey, what do you think about this one? And then he'll sort of take that from there and work on it from there. <laughs> sure. Sure. Fantastic. Um, is there a specific technique that you were practicing or working on at the moment? Um, I've been working on using trying to work on the uh, good old heel toe technique for a sure. good few years. Um, I started working on it a few years ago and I keep just sort of being off and on about it. <laughs> but I'm still still working with it though. <laughs> sure. Oh, it's it's a, yeah, fuck it. It's one of those ones that, you know, there's there's guys out there that'll pick it up like that. 
Uh, but for the rest of us, it's just a grind. It's just a grind yeah. every fucking day. Right. So uh, now we're going to play a game that I call first, last, best and worst Ross, so we uh, basically what you do is you tell us about the very first show that you ever played, the last show that you played, what the best show was that you've ever played, and then the worst show. So we can get into the semantics of that in just a minute. So tell us about the first gig that you ever played. Uh, so the first gig would have been with algorithms of, I think, probably a good like nine or ten years ago i think um at this venue called the navara lounge which was floating around in Newmarket for quite a while it was definitely nerve-wracking to start with. <laughs> that's sure. well yeah, that's my first sort of metal gig anyway yeah okay um i've even got a tattoo that like kind of um is a tribute to the navara lounge because the owner when she sold it up, went kind of like um, traveling around Mexico, I think it was, and she unfortunately passed away. So we all got oh, a shit. Tribute. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. Well, that fucking sucks. But um, band like Blood Nut and but it, Wolf Wizard and quite a few others like that were all regulars there as well. <laughs> Great. Um, what was the last show that you played, please? Um, and the last one was opening for Angelus Apatrida, which you guys also opened for as well. And um, yeah. at the at Whammy Bar in Auckland here, which, yeah, that was cool. It was a ruckus night. We were actually quite surprised with how many people turned up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> awesome. I uh, well, felt bad. I felt bad isn't the right word. Um, but uh, it kind of felt like all the people that came out to, or most of the people that came out to the Wellington show were just there because it was an international gig. Um, yeah. It didn't it didn't feel like they necessarily knew who the two bands were. So huh. there was, a, you know, yeah, lots of was, lots of folded yeah. arms and nodding heads, but not a lot of ruckusness. And uh, yeah, they, they took it in good spirit. You know, they were having a laugh about it. Um, the, the the boys and the bands, of course. Um, but yeah, it was it was good up in Auckland. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was got like real ruckus. It was like heaps of people there. I was pleasantly surprised. Oh, and they all turned it. up to right from the start too, even just to watch us, which was real cool. <laughs> fuck yeah! Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, tell us about the best show that you've ever played, please, Ross. Now, uh, this can be. Um, the show that you think that you played the best because, you know, us musicians are always real anal about how we played and, uh, you know, very specific about how well we didn't play. Um, so it can be, you know, uh, the show that you played the best at, it can be the best environment, it can be the biggest crowd. Um, it, you know, it's really open for interpretation. Please. Um, I'd probably say the opening for the Black Dahlia murder was probably like one that I followed as being sort of one of my favorite shows that I've done so far. One, just because of how much of a sort of inspiration Alan Cassidy is then to be opening for him was quite cool, but it was just a cool show in general as well. Like had a good turnout and stuff. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Are you going to see them in a couple of weeks? Yeah, yeah, yeah got my tickets already. <laughs> Choice. Awesome. Uh, now, Tell us about the worst show that you've ever played. Um, but again, this comes with uh, some caveats. Um, it can be the worst that you played. It can be the worst moment or the funniest moment. Um, it can be something that happened in the crowd. It can be something that happened on stage. Again, it's open for inter open to interpretation. Um, but please tell us about the worst show. Ooh, I'd say the worst one is when I was in Algorithms, we got put on like a hardcore show and Algorithms was kind of, we called ourselves post-metal, but I was like, we were sort of like a, I don't know, doomy prog band, I guess you might call it, <laughs> um, which just didn't really work out with playing a bunch, with a bunch of like hardcore bands and like a few, it was like a few overseas acts and stuff like 
the crowd there didn't really take to us playing that show very well. <laughs> That's definitely one that I remember as being a bit of a, a dud show. <laughs> sure, sure. We've, we've all been there. When it's not your crowd, it's not your ca- crowd. And it's not necessarily your fault, but it feels like fucking death up there, eh? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Cool. Well, uh, this is the very last part of the show, Ross. So this is where uh, I hand the floor over to you. You can make any plugs for any upcoming upcoming things that you want to, like the EP release or album rele- release, whatever it was, sorry. Um, and then make any shout outs to any people that you want to make shout outs to. Ross, the floor is yours. Um, well, first I'd like to just thank everyone that's checked out all the like most recent just one fix tracks they've actually been doing really well which is awesome lots of people have been checking them out and obviously playing them over and over again they've got quite a few players so far (laughs) um and yeah um so all the just one fix fans out there make sure you check out the ep when it comes out on may 6th sure everybody's gonna enjoy it (laughs) fuck yeah Um, yeah, and just a uh, you know sh- big shout out to just everybody that comes out to shows. Really, the fans would be pretty lost without having anybody that comes to watch. <laughs> a lot of the time, Thank you. It's like it's always makes a show better when there's a lot of people turning up and having a good time. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, Ross, thank you so much for being on my show, bro. I really fucking appreciate your time. No worries, man. Cheers for having me on here. (laughs) All good. And thank you so much for watching. This has been The Drop Clutch with me, Ricky V. We'll see you next time.